It is 250 billion years since the world was created, and it is as many years since the human spirit has come down to earth. The separation of the human soul from God is one of the greatest moments of creation. This separation is known in the world of angels as the dawn of the human soul. The soul leaves its source of origin as a divine ray entering the vast universe to perform the work that lies ahead of it. The human spirit has passed through all forms of life, gradually leaving them until it ultimately reached the last one, the human form. It has left all previous forms outwardly, but not inwardly. All these forms still live within the human form to this day. The human spirit will never be free of them. Humankind has evolved through five different stages. The time of the next, sixth stage of human evolution, which brings new and bright ideas, is approaching. But this stage will not be the final one either. It is the human objective to go forward in order to reach the status of an angel, to be master of himself and of the universe, to work side by side with God. Angels are given great power, the power to rule over solar systems, and this power is something that man subconsciously strives for, but as he is not yet ready for it and does not know how to attain it, he begins wielding his power over his fellow human beings, making mistakes and encountering contradictions. You should be like a brother to your fellow human beings until you attain the status of an angel so that you may rule and work alongside God.
The awakening of man is determined by his gratitude. Only he who is thankful for everything will awaken. Thankfulness is a force that awakens man from his slumber. That is how he draws God's attention to himself. The awakening of the human soul does not mean the wrongdoer turning to God. It means the freeing of the divine within man from all misconceptions, from all delusions he has fallen into throughout eternity. What does it mean for man to reconcile? It means there will never be any bitterness in his soul, whatever the circumstances. You may say you are reconciled with God, but have you fulfilled your second task to be reconciled with all your brethren? If you have performed this task, then there is one left, to be reconciled with yourself. Giving is one of the great processes in nature. Give, and it shall be given unto you. This law is called the law of universal bounty. Give everything with love, so that your giving may be blessed. Whatever you give, give it in the knowledge that it belongs to God, not to you. Become a wellspring that always gives. Every suffering is a sign that something new is beginning, that there is something you need to learn. When sorrow subsides, then joy comes and begins its work. Sorrow steps down, joy ascends. Thousands of years have passed since the great spirit of life brought up man, awakening the love of the spiritual world within his soul to guide him on the path of that great and universal aspiration we call spiritual elevation. When I say God, I mean that eternal beginning, that infinite space, that great foundation of life. And so, the door of your mind and of your heart should always be open, so that you may hear the voice of God saying, Come out of your old conceptions, come out of your old life and enter the new life, the new understanding of life. Think of God as an idea, as the most beautiful and the greatest thing in the world. If you always think of Him, He will ultimately find you. That which can liberate man from his fate is love of God, through which he will learn the law of service. When man decides to begin serving God, then he will be liberated from his arduous fate, from the dark bondage he has fallen into. Then the chains binding his feet will fall. Rejoice and be happy with what you have. Rejoice in your mind, rejoice in your heart, which bears warmth. Rejoice in your soul, which bears God's blessings for thousands and millions of years. Rejoice in your spirit, which shows you the way to God. Why should you be disheartened? Enjoy everything given to you and live by the law of God. Rejoice that you have come down to earth to learn. The letter R 
which stands for radost in Bulgarian or joy in English, shows that as he has lived on Earth, man has learned to distinguish good from evil. A pure life results in pure blood. The organism of contemporary people is contaminated by meat, wine and other kinds of food. Your spiritual body is contaminated by greed, malice and hatred. You love someone, but if you hear a hurtful word, you begin to hate him. Do you know what a terrible poison hatred is to your organism? The hurt you inflict is upon yourself. Pride is a poison too. What you need is purity. The caterpillar crawls on the ground because that is its chosen way of life. One day, when it turns into a butterfly, it will leave its old life and will enter a new life with new improved conditions. The butterfly is different from the caterpillar by having more intelligence and by being master of its existence. God has innumerable ways, specific for each person, through which he can appear before each soul and give it an impulse for advancement. By studying the direction of his movement, man reaches out for the truth, which is as necessary to the human mind as the light is to his eyes. Just as the light and the rays of the sun are necessary to the physical world, so are the truth and its rays necessary to the world of the mind and the spirit. The first essential law is the application of truth. The kingdom of God tolerates no deception of any kind. The second essential law is the application of wisdom and knowledge. The intelligent world requires that all people study with perseverance and love. Man is alive as long as he is learning. Life is nothing else but a constant endeavor to acquire knowledge which comes from the sublime, the divine origin. The third essential law is love which bears life. This means that man needs to aspire towards the divine wisdom which bears knowledge, to truth which bears freedom, to love which bears life, to life which bears joy, to knowledge which bears strength and to freedom which bears the vastness to human soul. Enjoy the sun that rises and sets. Enjoy the flowers that bloom and spread their fragrance all around. Enjoy the wellsprings that flow. Enjoy the birds that sing. Enjoy each person you meet who greets you with a smile. God speaks through every living thing and greets you. I 
has said, What you know about the application of colors in human clothing is related to thoughts and feelings as well. Each thought, each feeling, each action is clad in a certain color like in a piece of clothing. It can be said that man is woven. The entire cosmos weaves. Throughout the day, all the planets pass through your body, and at night, when you go to sleep, your astral twin will again be under the influence of these same currents, but in a different form. Therefore, when you are awake and when you are sleeping, the whole of nature is at work on you. What does harmony in man mean? A coordination of his forces. As a musician tunes his instrument to a given key, so should everyone attune his will and energy to a given key, love. Love is the only harmonizing power. In other words, it attunes everything. Build your home out of the fibers of love. Weave it out of the fibers of wisdom and fortify it with the fibers of truth. Then, lay out a feast in your home and invite love and truth. Get up to serve them and you will learn how to live. People today suffer from the power of their mind. Their mind is like an untamed horse. The entire contemporary culture is a culture for exercising and disciplining the human mind. Man needs to realize that he is in contact with millions of minds here on earth and in the world beyond, and if this connection is the correct one, then the results of his life shall be good. Thought is the most powerful factor in the universe. What light is to the physical world, thought is to the spiritual and intellectual world of man. Whatever the substance is of the human brain, such will be man's thoughts. Every thought has its shape, it may have the character of a sheep, a wolf, a bear, a fox, a snake, a spider, an ant, and all these shapes are qualities that form the human character. You should reach the thought that will create light. What is the thought that creates light? The rightful thought. Aum is the word of the spirit. When you sing this word in its language, it will come to know you and will help you because it understands you and knows your needs. The spirit is not something external, something you can touch. You are immersed in the spirit. Power, strength, space, light, warmth, all virtues, everything in the world, and the secrets of the revelation of the universe, these are all due to the spirit. The spirit is a collective body of advanced beings who have lived for millions of years and who have established methods of how to work. 
we too need to use these methods. The spirit is the most sublime, purest, and sacred thing, and in this sanctity, the spirit bears the conditions of conscious human life. I use this word conscious, but I could use another. In the broadest sense, when man bears conscious life within, he will live as a musician and as a poet. He will always be merry. His soul will be at peace. The world will not worry him, and nothing will upset him. He will not dwell on insignificant things in life. He will only dwell on the great things God has manifested. Matter is what brings things together. It bears the pregnancy of ideas. Many ideas have been implanted in matter. Multiplying also take place within matter. If there was no matter, no form could be created. Matter is what envelops the spirit, making it comprehensible to us. Spirit is what gives value to matter, which, on its part, gives the spirit an opportunity to manifest itself in some form. A man who possesses knowledge would make his clothes out of sun rays. Wool, food, everything comes from the sun. He would not spend money on food. He would never quarrel with anyone, as there would be nothing to quarrel over. There is no need to bow down to the sun, but what it gives should be received and processed. Man should take energy from the sun for his brain, for his lungs, for his stomach, and for his body. In this energy lies intelligence. You should always know when the sun rises, so that you may be awake and go out to welcome it. The first ray of the sun is something very powerful and beautiful. If you can catch it ten times in a year, that would be enough. But in order to feel it properly, nothing should distract you. One day we will understand that sun in which God manifests and in which God lives and sends light. Besides this sun that we see. There is another sun, the divine sun, which never sets. The great initiated beings have eternal day. For them, the sun never sets. They see the sun everywhere, the earth from all sides. To them, matter is transparent. Under the influence of the sun, man's cosmic mind is awakened. The sun is what awakens ideas in man. The sun is a living, collective being which has a cosmic awareness. Within it is thought. When this cosmic, divine awareness within man is awakened, the sun begins to think of him, and that is when man is healthy and lives a long life.
The four directions of the world show the qualities each person should acquire. The East represents the quality of justice. The West, the good relations among people. The North, truth and freedom. The South, good, bounty in the world. In justice, the good relations, truth, freedom, and prosperity, an inner harmony exists that people are only now beginning to study. Justice without truth cannot manifest. Truth without good cannot manifest. Man begins with justice, which means with movement. Keep the following measure within you. If you want people to be good towards you, you should be good towards them. Now you may ask, why is the world arranged in this way? Then propose a program on how to arrange the world in a better way. You create a play in which there will be no suffering, in which the characters will not fall in love, will not suffer, will only eat and drink and sit like mummies, like wax figures and look at each other, where there will be no crying, where people will not talk to each other. Where will the pleasantness of life be then? You are now indignant that things happen in this or that way, and not in the way you expected. I ask, what is wrong with crying? When someone cries, you can see that the person is suffering, and when one suffers, one is alive. If a person cries, that means he has a heart, he has feelings. After each suffering, if you solve it correctly, comes a new light, a new acquisition. The mind, the heart and the body of the one who suffers becomes ennobled. The great and the ordinary person suffer alike, but the great person suffers and is elevated, while the ordinary person suffers and becomes embittered. Beauty is the longing of the human soul. Man looks for it everywhere. Beauty is not a physical quality. Beauty belongs neither to the physical nor to the spiritual world, but it is manifested through them. Beauty belongs to the divine world. In the physical world it is a fleeting moment, but in the spiritual world it remains for a longer time and in the divine world, it stays forever. Beauty does not come by itself. It is an inner organic process, the result of the harmonious combination of human gentleness, thought and will. Man needs to look within himself and find a beautiful side to everything. Beauty is the external form, the external side of purity. And purity is the inner, spiritual side. You say that you will put the world in order. There is nothing to put in order. You are the world. To make use of nature, we need to manifest both an inner and an external life. External life is expressed through movement, and inner life through thought, feeling and action. Each one of our external actions is an expression of the action taking place within the spiritual world. If you don't know how to make a step, how to walk, how to move, you will lose all the conditions you have acquired by breathing from the air and from food. From the way a person walks, you can see if he is on the wrong path. Take a look at animals and birds and see how they move. 
your movements should be beautiful, supple, natural and graceful. It is important which foot you will step on while getting up from bed in the morning or going to work and whether you move your hands slowly or quickly, as well as how you will look around. Many misfortunes happen to you because you don't pay attention to these important things. With the movement of your hands, with your touch, you can heal or you can harm if you do not have this knowledge. Strive towards beautiful, conscious, supple movements so that you can come in conscious contact with the ebbs and flows of cosmic energy, in other words, with the inflowing and outflowing cosmic energy. The divine always triumphs, while the human is always defeated. This is the law with no exceptions. Nowadays, no science can be built on the basis of human personality. Modern science, modern philosophy, chemistry, physics, biology and take even theology and all other branches of science, owing to the human personality, these sciences have been corrupted. The personality conceals the worst things. It is a manifestation of selfishness, civility, fear, deception and lies. The human personality is woven from all the negative qualities in the world. That is the personality. I'm not talking about the human essence, man, the awareness. I'm talking of the personality. Money. Everywhere money. That is what the human personality is. But the personality is not the only thing manifested in the world. Alongside the personality, the conscious human soul is manifested and it turns the acts of selfishness into good. That is due to the human soul, which is constantly working for goodness in the world. The whole universe sings. The sun, the earth, the stars, everything sings. We are now in an age when our earth and the whole solar system are coming out of the darkness of ignorance and are coming close to a new constellation, which in esoteric science is called Alpheola, and is, for the time being, invisible. It is one of the powerful constellations where the Earth will be rebuilt, as well as our bodies. Our minds and bodies will undergo such a change that humankind has never experienced before. Christ came from this constellation to show people the methods and principles of intelligent life. Each new age begins with a new rhythm. Now, a new rhythm in life is coming. The divine is making its way everywhere. The divine wave, which is now coming, will elevate us to a higher level, as well as all minerals, plants and animals. Remember, no second wave will come. If you stay for the future, the conditions will be harder. As long as man lives for himself, he is under restricted conditions of action. But when he lives for other people, his life conditions will become enriched. When he reaches the spiritual concept of life, the fulfillment of the divine laws, then man will enter the fullness of life, which encompasses everything. The relations among you are from the ancient past. Once you accept this philosophy for yourself, all controversial issues will be resolved at once. Each person, depending on his state, forms a specific aura around himself. Specific vibrations that a sensitive man will sense at once. If the vibrations of a famous person are on a downward trend, 
people will gradually start avoiding him. As soon as he elevates his state, his vibrations will also be uplifted, and people will love him again. Pessimists, morose, and desperate people are usually lonely. When a student fails his exams, his state will sink to such an extent that those close to him will start avoiding him. For the same reason, the ill avoid the ill. They are afraid they might be infected and fall into the same state. Each person seeks out the healthy, cheerful, and strong people because he can take something from them. Each person seeks out the mountain wellspring because he can draw its crystal clear waters. Connect with the souls that you are in harmony with. When man leaves the earth, the only thing he can take with him are three atoms: one bearing the wealth of his mind, another bearing the wealth of his heart, and a third one bearing the wealth of his will. Imagine what his wealth will be. One atom is calculated at one twenty-five millionth of a millimeter. This means. Dividing a millimeter into twenty-five million parts and taking one of them, with these three atoms, with this wealth, you will enter the world beyond. What will you do with them? In one atom, there is so much energy that it can move the Earth for thousands of years. There is so much hidden, compressed energy that it can move the Earth for thousands of years. What were these intelligent beings like, who were able to compress so much energy into so little space? Today is the day when we need to prepare the best gift of God's love. Today is the day when we need to prepare the best gift of God's wisdom. Today is the day when we need to prepare the best gift of God's truth. What can be better than these gifts? On the day we prepare the best gift of love, the new sun shall rise. On the day we prepare the best gift of wisdom. The sun shall reach its zenith. On the day we prepare the best gift of the truth, the sun shall stop setting and will shine for eternity. We shall fulfill God's will. We shall become sons of God, and we shall go from glory to glory. What is love, wisdom, and truth? Complete contentment. How can you turn discontentment into contentment? Be glad of the wealth of others, as if it were your own. Be glad of the knowledge of others, as if it is your own. Be glad of the capabilities of others, as if they were your capabilities. Be glad of the prosperity of others, and you will attain it. After a period of deep thought, the primordial cause created a perfect world with great bounty, which everyone expects to attain. How shall you find this bounty? By reasoning and by learning. If all people are thankful for what God has given them, they will be in harmony with each other. If people are always thankful, 
many things will be given to them, and many secrets will be revealed. There is no meaning in mere existence. Life needs to be used. So I say, that is why the divine schools are created, so that people may learn how to live and how to use life. If you don't appreciate earthly life, how will you appreciate heavenly life? A new knowledge and a new culture is coming into the world. I call it the culture of the divine love, wisdom, and truth. It will teach people how to live. The old life is weeping. The new life is rejoicing. The old life is the roots, and the new life is the branches. We are now approaching the end of lovelessness and the beginning of love. Who awakens man? He who takes care of him. The mother awakens the child. This shows that she takes care of the child. God awakens man. This shows he takes care of him. The question of God is not a question of faith. It is a question of experience. Man has twelve bodies, but for now, only four of them are functioning. The other eight bodies are in a rudimentary state. They will manifest in the future. When you enter the spiritual world, another four will manifest, and when you enter the divine world, the other four will develop as well. The divine spirit has been at work on us for thousands of years and has given us an organism with legs, arms, a brain, a heart, and so on. And if we, in our present life, cannot control our bodies with its powers, which are in the brain, heart, nerves, arteries, and all the cells, what can we expect? You get up in the morning and you think nothing of your body. Say a prayer for it. Send your thoughts to your body. Think of all your cells which enter your brain and your stomach. Think of all living beings that work in it, and send them a thought, a blessing, as any good master would do his servants. Encourage them, give them strength, and they will be happy. Speak to them; they understand everything. There is a divine law that rules over them. Encourage them; they are conscious beings. Be mindful, be attentive, and. Talk to them as a good master would. There is so much energy in each human cell that it can displace the Earth's axis by one meter. Man could be a great force if all the cells in his body were in accord and harmony. Today, people use their powers in destruction more than they do in a constructive way. If the power of thought is harnessed only for creative and constructive goals, the results could be colossal. The bud blooms outward to become a flower. The flower emanates a fragrance. The flower chalices wither, leaving a small seedling inside the fruit. Where do the bud and the flower go? Everything is within the fruit. The bud is the first phase. The seedling is in the fruit. This has an analogy with the human life.
The person who is not acquainted with the profound reasons in the sublime organic world does not comprehend the deeds of the human spirit, and it works with certain mathematical tables which were created before eternity itself, and which form the divine and immutable mathematics on which the vast universe of today is based, a universe where all actions are strictly and intelligently determined. Each human being is created from a special kind of matter. According to esoteric science, the matter man is made of was not taken from the earth only. The matter that man was initially made of, the cosmic man, this matter was taken from the entire universe, from all suns and planets, a small particle from each of these was taken to make our present body. For man to be born of the spirit corresponds to a new state of human awareness. The Divine Spirit wants to free us of all burdens, of all anguish, of all worries we now have, of all our anxieties, how to live our life, of our doubts whether we shall go to hell or to heaven, and so on. All of these questions are not essential. The most important thing in the world is to love him who loves you. The only being that loves you is the Spirit, the Divine. It will speak to you through everything. The trees, the flowers, the sun, the people, the animals. Then whenever you may be, you are a citizen of the universe. There is something great in the world man needs to rely on. The difficulty lies in finding that great beginning. As soon as the grand divine plan is revealed to man, he will understand the words from the scriptures. Without the will of my Father in heaven, not even a single hair can fall from my head. Until you attain this awareness, you may lose all your hair. Whatever disease may afflict you, seek help in deep breathing. There is no ailment that cannot be cured by deep breathing. Breathe and sing to your pain. All musical notes are living beings in the invisible world. C is the specific tone of one group of intelligent beings. D is the tone of another group of beings, and so on. When we sing the scales, we connect with these beings. When we sing, they come and there is an interchange with them. Music is a power. Music is the best conduit of the divine powers. In the present life, the great anxieties and the swift changes you go through from sorrow to joy leave a certain residue of toxins. That is why music is used as a means against these toxins. Man is built musically. Singing is a powerful flow which purifies the entire organism, but only if while singing every cell, every fiber participates. Nature sings, the birds sing in May, the fragrance of the flowers is also a form of singing. Life is a dance.
да пребъде Божият мир и да изгрее Божията радост и Божието веселие в нашите сърца. Да пребъде Божият мир и да изгрее Божията радост и Божието веселие в нашите сърца. Man is a great being. If you understood man, if you believed in him and not in what is revealed from without, you would be aware how great he is. Because what is seen on the outside is a mere manifestation of certain thoughts, feelings and actions. Man is not what he is nowadays thought to be. He is not just a material being that disappears in death. What dies is not man. If man disappeared with death, then there would be no need to philosophize about him. He would be like an object, a robot that will fall to dust the next day. The idea that man will die and disappear is the first lie introduced into this world. There is something in man that does not die, not in this world or in the world beyond. There is something that does not die, does not decompose, does not disappear, and that is, in reality, man. When we talk of man, we mean the soul. Man is a living soul with all the opportunities of the eternal and immortal life. This soul is in possession of all abilities, all methods for working within its own self, and it implements them into the brain and into the body as a whole, the body it manifests itself through. There are different stages to man. By man we do not mean just the being that lives on earth. Man does not only exist on the earth and in the soul system, he inhabits the entire stellar universe all the suns and planets. The planets and the suns are inhabited by beings that are in different stages of intelligence. It is not important what kind of bodies they have. They are intelligent beings and belong to the same human race. This race is gradually developing. Many of the human beings from the other soul systems are far more advanced than earthly man because they come out of the great primordial source of life earlier than we did. Their wisdom is so great that our culture compared to those on Sirius, for example, is still in its infancy. Compared to the beings on Sirius, modern people are not even children. But man has always been a traveler. The earth has not been and will not be his only abode. Each man, each human soul, is a primordial element of the great cosmic man. As such, he occupies a clearly defined place in living nature and plays a certain role. Without him, the universe cannot be manifested in the entirety of its harmony. That is why each man here on Earth has a certain role to play. Without the human being, life cannot be. The appearance of so many millions of people on Earth is no accident. You ask why you have come to the Earth. I say, to manifest God's love, to manifest God's wisdom, to manifest God's truth. To manifest God's justice, to manifest God's virtue. You have come to manifest all of these virtues, to manifest everything imparted to your souls by eternity. And remember that man has a great destiny.
Man is born to rule all beings, to regulate all elements, to put the earth in order. He must become a good master. And he will be a good master only when he understands what God has imparted to him. He needs to know what his bodies are and what his raiments are. He needs to know what the primordial matter is through which his mind functions. Christ too wants to be helped now by people who have the knowledge how to build, according to all the principles of the divine science, people to whom the welfare of the kingdom of God is paramount. When Christ came down to earth, he came down for the purpose of helping human souls, because each soul which has come down to earth has one essential task which it needs to fulfill on its own. For the human soul which aspires to elevate, nothing is impossible. It is strong, thanks to its connection with other souls that are its real fellow beings. That is why the art of earthly life is in this. As long as man is on the earth, in this small form, he needs to come into contact with the souls of other people. Herein lies the key to success. Even if one soul loves you, it is capable of helping you in the difficulties of life. And when many souls direct their love towards one person, that person can become anything. A poet, an artist, a musician, a scientist. Love is a great force. So remember, you are a soul, not a body. You are a soul, once conceived within the Divine Spirit, conceived in love. Now your soul is already a bud waiting to blossom. Focus your consciousness on it, because this is one of the greatest moments of your life. Then you shall open up to the great sun, which sends forth light to the entire Divine World. There is only one divine teacher in the world. One is the master who is the bearer of true knowledge. He has many manifestations in life, but in essence, he is one and the same. Once man finds one of the moments of his manifestations, then he will find himself as well. There can only be one master in the world, and it is God. And when Christ said to his disciples, There is only one Father, he meant the Great One, the only Master. And so there is one great Master in the world, though his manifestations are many. Because I have said to you and again I repeat, There is one knowledge and one light. But knowledge does not come from one place, just as light does not enter through one window. Innumerable are the ways of knowledge, innumerable are the windows of light. But you may ask, how can we come to know a real master? Knowing the master is a purely spiritual process. The notion of a master is strictly defined in living nature. A master is only he in whom there is no exertion. He is powerful but exercises no violence. A master is only he who harbors no lie. His sublime wisdom excludes all lies. A master is only he who harbors no malice. His goodness excludes all malice. If someone harbors violence, lies, malice, he's not a master, he's a student. This is the simplest definition of master and student and it is the easiest to understand. The presence of the Master is evident by the fact that he gives life, light and freedom, because a Master is only he who lives and works by the laws of love, wisdom and truth. He who does not abide by these laws is a student. 
The love of the master is well tried; it does not need to be tested. The knowledge of the master is well tried; it does not need to be tested. The purity of the master is well tried; it does not need to be tested. Did people come to know Christ when he appeared before them two thousand years ago? Do they know him now? When the truth appears in the world, it will not be clad in royal attire, but in modest garments. Thus, Christ appeared two thousand years ago in plain form, in which people did not recognize him. But such are the laws of this world. In this plain attire. A man like any other, even his disciples did not know him fully. Only three of them saw Christ's face during his transformation. In other words, his real essence. In this inner light, they saw him and knew him as he was known among the angels. But for man to see Christ, he must have a mind, a heart. A soul and spirit like his. All those to whom Christ appeared before they reached this state fell face down to the earth. And what can a fallen man see? Man needs to drink from the wellspring itself, not from the river, which has become turbid because so many other mixtures have entered into it. Follow the path leading to this wellspring. The road is somewhat long and hard. But in the end, you will shall drink living water from the wellspring itself, which shall forever invigorate your mind and your heart. There is a lodge of scientists on the earth who get together once a year to discuss all kinds of scientific issues. These initiated people know about the Earth, about its past and present, much more than all modern scientists representing the official science. As to the future of the Earth, they have no certain knowledge of it, but they too make assumptions about it. Besides this lodge of initiated people dedicated to the Earth, there is another lodge on the Sun, consisting of the great initiated. Who know for certain not only the past of our planet, but its future as well. But both lodges are only organs of that great universal organism of perfect, highly advanced beings that form the great universal fellowship. And when we talk of the great universal fellowship, we mean that hierarchy of intelligent beings that have completed their evolution. Millions and billions of years before humankind, and now rule the entire universe. They rule it because they themselves took part in its creation, under the direct guidance of the great divine spirit. And, judging by the intelligent organization of the entire universe, with all of its galactic systems, with its myriad suns and planets. Judging even by these sublime mechanics and the technical perfection the Earth was built with, you can see the power of the mind and the spirit of these architects of genius who worked for manifesting God's plan for the creation of universe. Depending on the level of knowledge and development, and depending on the service they perform, these beings are arranged in a hierarchy. An organic order of rank. These levels are known by the names of seraphims, brethren of love; cherubims, brethren of harmony; thrones, brethren of the will; dominants, brethren of intelligence and joy; forces, brethren of movement and growth; powers, brethren of external forms and arts; superiors. Brethren of time, state, and rhythm, archangels, brethren of fire and warmth, angels, bearers of life and vegetation. The last, tenth rank, will be occupied by the advanced human souls. 
All of them together represent the great cosmic man. That is how the great universal fellowship in the world has worked, how it works now and how it will work in the future. And it will work until that time when universal love, universal wisdom and universal truth encompass the whole of creation. And then each breath will sing praise to God in sacred peace and harmony.